What's good, ladies and gents? Welcome to the MK of Pugilism Boxing channel where we talk all things boxing. Remember to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Put the bell notification on all so you get notified straight away as soon as new stuff drops. So let's talk about it. Last night we had uh, the rematch around, what was it, two and a half or two years at least in the making between Josh Taylor and the Tartan Tornado and El Gato. Um, Jack Catterall, this was a rematch of the very controversial first fight where pretty much, I want to say 9 out of 10 people, probably about 90% of people who watched that fight um, had Jack Catterall winning. I think he would, me personally, too, very clear winner in that fight. So this was his chance now to get some revenge. He's had to wait a long time. There were certain times where it looked like this fight wasn't going to happen. But fortunately for Jack Catterall, it did happen. He got his chance now to get some revenge. And um, that is exactly what he got. Um, overall, good, very good performance um, by um, Jack Catterall. He was very impressive. And um, to be honest, in, in this fight, he, he pretty much um, started to dominate from the word go. From the time that the bell rang, um, first bell rang, he got straight on the jab, straight to the center of the ring his defensive work was very good um you know sort of leaning away from punches coming back with good counters and for me he he definitely um he swept about the first three or so rounds very clearly his, his the start he made was excellent and josh taylor for his part was as good a fighter as he is he was just sort of coming off second best he wasn't able to get out of the way of Jack Catterall's punches and Jack Catterall was able to just pretty much do very basic stuff simple stuff just that straight jab sticking a jab in his face all the time and then landing with that good um left cross of his and Josh Taylor was just sort of second best and there was there wasn't really much um head movement or anything like that from Josh Taylor. He was just literally pretty much on the receiving end um of Jack Catterall's straight punches and, you know, whatever he did try for the most part, Jack Catterall just saw it come in and ducked out of the way. And then when Taylor would miss, again Jack Catterall would just sort of make him pay um every time and it, that that was a lot of the pattern of the fight i mean even you talk about the mid rounds again it was um you know classy performance by jack catterall um with josh taylor sort of playing catch up because even the mid rounds taking the same sort of pattern five six all those rounds there were sort of taking the same pattern with jack catterall doing very basic simple things jab straight you know one two keeping him out with a jab, doubling up the jab and just keeping Josh Taylor at bay. And Josh Taylor was sort of constantly being frustrated on the outside, trying to get in, trying to do some damage on Jack Catterall, but he simply wasn't able to do much. And, and you know, that was pretty much how it ended up. I mean, he did have some decent rounds, Josh Taylor. He did take a few of these rounds, but to be honest, I, I don't feel think you could really give him more than about five rounds I suppose this fight could be seven five at the most uh, to Josh Taylor he, he didn't do um he wasn't successful in nowhere near enough of the rounds to really make an argument for a draw or for him to win I mean he was upset at the end but he just didn't do enough because even after his successful rounds the problem he would have is that you know, following some of his attacks, you get immediate counters from Jack Catterall. And then following his successful rounds, the very next round, Jack Catterall would step it up and, and, you know, sort of step up to a high pace and he would dominate with his work. So it's like he'd have a, you know, Taylor has a good round. Jack Catterall comes in the next round and he just sort of outworks him and then capitalizes and and basically cancels out the good work of Josh Taylor by coming in and having a better round. Like some good examples were, you know, the 11th round, you know, Josh Taylor does all right at nine, 10, but then 11th round, Jack Catterall hurts him once again. And that was something that happened in this fight multiple times. Um, you know, Jack Catterall hurts Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor denied being hurt, but you could just see he was, he was rocked down to his boots um, with, with those uh, left hands. And it, it, Catterall again in the, in the 11th, you know, gives him another left hand, it kind of shakes Josh Taylor. And um, he was a bit unlucky in a way, Jack Catterall, not to put 
Josh Taylor down because in that 11th round he lands that left hand and I think he tries to follow up and then he gets tangled and that means they both fall over to the floor and I think if he had a bit more aggression and had he not have got tangled up there and followed up with some combinations we may have been looking at a knockdown or we may have been looking at um you know Josh Taylor getting stopped there if he could just sort of follow up with his work but you know to his credit Catterall he done exactly what he needed to win you know he dominated with very simple basic things the basic jab and bringing that left hand into play as well and um he, he fought at a very sort of high pace and Josh Taylor simply couldn't really keep up with it he, he couldn't deal with the counter punching of Jack Catterall and he just couldn't deal with 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 the pace and how the fight was going he his problem was Taylor's problem was that he he just failed to make any adjustments to what Catterall was doing his his defense was horrible really Josh Taylor's I mean he wasn't really you know blocking any shots that were coming his way he was pretty much just taking them head on and there was a little bit of movement but it, defensively it was just almost non-existent he was just taking shot after shot after shot and you know Catterall was just landing all these clean shots and okay he, he didn't go down he didn't get knocked out but when you're taking all those clean shots you're losing rounds and you know that's that's pretty much what happened Jack Catterall you know gets his justice he gets his revenge I thought he should have been the rightful winner of the first fight but he gets the victory here in the second fight and now for him, really, in my book, he's got to go on and push for, um, try and get one of the world champions in the ring. I mean, you know, there's there's guys out there. I suppose Devin Haney's out there, people like that. Um, yeah, there's it's all kind of hard fights. You've got that Lucas Matthias, you know, another difficult fight. Big, big puncher. But I think that's what Catwell's got to do. He's got to go for now the um, top guys at 140 and try and win a world title because I think these two years in between that's the sad thing about it that he's had this two-year period waiting for one guy and he did get his undisputed opportunity he got robbed in that so he you know but unfortunately he didn't box for a world title in between that period so now he's he's still quite young you know he's 30 years old so i think he can now push on and 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 look at one of the champions he definitely deserves a shot whether he beats one of the champions is, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have him as a favourite, but I think he possesses that style, the southpaw counterpunching style to cause all of the champions' problems while it lasts. He, he's one of those guys that with his counterpunching skills, he, you know, he has the attributes to cause a lot of guys' problems. At the very least, he'll he'll give them a hard fight just by being awkward, being southpaw and, you know, being a, a slick boxer. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts on the fight um, revenge for Jack Catterall. And um, let me know that in the comment section below. Until next time, it's MKO Pugilism. Over and out. Catch you on the next one.